tell anyone. I say to them, well, you're among a lot of candidates that are mentioned, and as far as the ultimate action, I couldn't tell you or anyone else. Huh. Well, even until the time he was leaving, he said to me, well, what would you do? I said, well, when the president offers me a thing like that, I would be a hell of a thing to turn down, huh. especially the fellow that's in your position. I imagine huh. what you're looking for is a place on the ticket in the future as vice president or president. Huh. If you are, this is a hell of an attractive thing to be sent into one of the most difficult countries. And if you ever worked that situation out with our old friend over there, De Gaulle, you'd be one of the top people in the country. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he's trying to find a bird to, to land, whether it's in uh, in uh, Maryland or whether it's in Illinois. You prefer to come back to Illinois and be the governor. Well, yeah. uh, a lot of people would want to be. Yeah, I would, think, I would think that's right. I would think that's right. You better damn sure get your best candidate if you want him. And I'm a daily man myself, first, last, and all the time. And I'm for you when you're wrong. I haven't found you wrong, but when you are, you when you need somebody, when you need somebody, you're wrong. You count Humphrey and Johnson. Just in either you can do it in that order or Johnson and Humphrey, whichever fits in the book better. Well, the the answer to it is is that. Uh, Oh, the reason I haven't made, and I think you'd agree with me, we're not oh, yeah. making any fast Oh, I don't want you to. I just want to. March the 4th, I yeah. said to this fellow, go back home and think it over. I, I assured him of nothing. I said, there's no, no assurance out here if you wanted to be considered. However, if you wanted to be considered, be prepared that you might be turned down. Yeah. Oh, and well. you mightn't be the candidate. Because well. I said, after all, uh, we are never assured. We don't have yeah. to be. Going. He brought up, you know, about this thing of being away, which he has. Yeah. I said, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. Well, what we, what I want you to do, I don't care. Whatever your decision is, it's mine, and I'm 100% for it. If it goes, ball bounces that way, whatever your judgment. All I want is results the morning after. I don't want to, I don't want to try to tell them what to do. That's, uh, that's my man, and that's what uh, I look to you for, and uh, so forth. Now. Uh, uh, this this Charleston, West Virginia paper took a poll of all the delegates, and it ran about uh, 1,400 uh, for uh, me and Humphrey, and about 49 for McCarthy, and about 39 for Bobby. Uh, the 39 uh, stragglers, all of you damn fellows, will put on a son of a bitch, and when you got 50 states and you only got 39 sons of bitches, that's a pretty good average. We've got more than one bastard on our delegation from Texas, but I thought the poll came out pretty good. But he has got a few of uh, peace up here in New York, and he's got Schlesinger up at Harvard, and uh, uh, he has decided that uh, it's up to him to uh, uh, reclaim the Democratic Party. Now, I'll just tell you what will happen now, just beginning with uh, me and uh, Hubert Humphrey and John Connell and the rest of them. Uh, uh, if you ever thought that they had a goddamn revolution in the party, uh, you never would see that there's just been a little uh, kindergarten. Uh, uh, play Indians until this one came along. The only thing, uh, I, and you know, you never make any suggestion to the president. You never, yeah. the only thing I would say to you as a friend, don't let them get you too excited on this. It they wouldn't, they wouldn't at all, but I, no, I just I, thought, I, mean, I think there has been, uh, and, and keep your mind open, you see, so we, we keep our mind open on everything. Yeah. Uh, but as far as, is the, uh, Convention is concerned, and as far as everything else, there is. But don't, I wouldn't like to see us start a counter thing to then have someone say, well, which happens in the dealings with mankind and human. Well, man, damn it, I'll go anyhow. Because I saw that with Stevenson, and I pleaded with him in 60. Uh, I said, Adelaide, you haven't got a chance. These people around you are making a damn fool out of you. I said to this fellow in the telephone conversation, I said, Robert, as a an older man and great respect for the former president. Don't you do anything rash until I get a chance to talk to you. Well, he said, what do you mean by that? I said, exactly what I said. Don't be a goddamn fool because I said, there's a lot of people around you that just want you to stick your neck out and want to push you out because of their feelings against someone else. That's right. How long ago, how long ago is this? This is last week, uh, right before I, I went away to fish. He wanted to said he did. He wanted to come out and spend some time with me and sit down and talk. I said, I'll be glad to do it, Robert. In the meantime, don't let these goddamn fools around you stick your head out. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, exactly what I said. I said, I, I was around in 1948. I was elected delegate 
for the first time. And I said, well, some of the leaders out here were uh, floundering around. Jack Garvey and Ed Kelly, God love them. And I said to them, look, at, I'm only a kid from the stockyards, but I'm with Truman and I'm the only goddamn delegate from Cook County. And then they called me up. They had a plant. They said, well, this is the city news bureau. You know that all your leaders are against uh, Truman? They <laughs> are the goddamn who's against Truman. When I got to the national convention in Philadelphia, this is the first time I ever had the chance to vote. My vote is going to be cast for Truman, and I'm going to carry Illinois banner, and the goddamn soul going to stop me from carrying the banner for Truman. And, and when we're on the train, they brought me into the into the dining room, and they had a big powwow, all the leaders, and they said, do you think Truman could win? I said, so look at I'm not an international or international guy. I'm a little guy from the <laughs> stockyard. I think it's Truman, and let me tell you another thing. If you fellows are not for Truman, you're a lot of goddamn fools, and you'll be out of the picture for the next four years. Yeah. So I brought Ed Kelly, who was a frame on going, to take Kelly out as national committeeman. He was a great fellow. He had a lot of mistakes like you and I, but he was a great guy, and my loyalty to him, I never... I said, Ed, look at Mr. Mayor at the time. I said, don't be a goddamn fool. <laughs> Get off the train and announce for Truman. Otherwise, you won't be the national committeeman. They're framing you, and they're going to try to take you tomorrow, which they were. Yeah. Kelly gets off the train, he declares for Truman, so <laughs> all these guys who were talking wondered what the hell had happened, so the next day, sure enough, in the caucus, they come up with a candidate against uh, Kelly, yeah. and Kelly was unanimously elected because he was for Truman, and to show you how little they thought of Harry, I put on the, uh, the demonstration, I hired the band, we got the banners, <laughs> brought all the kids the farm, we did for Truman, and, and uh, as you remember, it was... One time I was invited, and I suppose I shouldn't have done it, but I went back to Chicago with my organization because I was loyal to them, and and I refused to go to breakfast with the president. I suppose I shouldn't have done that, but Adamowski went, and then he became, you know, a great outlaw. So these are the kind of stories I'm going to tell this young man, and I see him. And I'll just leave. I think, uh, I, and then I wouldn't let this other backfill you know, back when get too strong. We're going to do this to hell with that. Just say, look, at, we got a great candidate. We got a great president. That's all we say. And we don't know whether he'll accept it, but God damn it, if he won't, we're going to draft him. That's but good. I, I'll just, uh, can I just turn that movement over to you, and will you will you underwrite that while I do these I other things? We will. All but right. Not, I, but not, not let any of our fellows get I understand. against this. I country. understand that. You have the most magnanimous position, which you can at times and say, well, after all, I've taken this goddamn thing for so long, I wouldn't say it to too many people. Begin to, then they'll run out and say, Johnson isn't a candidate. Yeah. And then they get the ball going that way. But yeah. the idea is that we don't pay any attention to anyone else. We keep going in a positive program ourselves. And Johnson is our candidate. There isn't any doubt about it. And if he tries to get away, we'll draft him. All right, because that's... We need him. I'll leave you in charge of that department. I hear... All these other conversations are not. All right, here's Hubert wants to say a word. Oh. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Mr. Vice President. How are you? Well, I'm just fine. We're sure glad to hear your voice. I'm glad to talk to you. How's Muriel and the family? Just fine. And uh, you, you can assess our love. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. You and the president. We're with you 100%. Well. And we don't want to pay attention to anyone else. Our program is a positive one. That's right. Let us go out and sell it. We haven't sold it enough. That's right. And I said to him, a lot of those cabinet members down there around the making speeches that it should be more. They never tell about what they're doing. That's they never tell about what you've been doing for the last four years. Their thing is that if it's two million, it should be four billion. If it's four billion, it should be eight. God damn it, they ought to get them all together and brief them and tell them, why don't we start talking about what we've done in the last hey, couple of years? We were just talking about this here this morning. Fine, Mr. Pre Vice President. I'll be talking. Well, Dick, we'll be in touch. I'll say hello. All right, now. Bye-bye. Now, <laughs> He said, yeah, let me tell you.